Namaste. Hi. A flowing type of practice, also called vinyasas, help develop an active type of flexibility, mobility, coordination, dynamism. And when we add specific breath patterns to the way we move our bodies as we transition from one asana to, to the next, that's where we actually build the coordination needed for yeah, the body yeah, to ride the flow of the breath. And the byproduct is the activation of the energy locks, bandhas, on their superficial or, I say, uh, beginning stages. Yes, the bandhas develop the fastest through movement, mobility. All right. So that's the first stage of your practice. So as beginners, I encourage you to you know, do the flow. How simple your flow you know, is, yeah, it's all right. Yeah, just keep progressing it yeah, until such time that the breath becomes so organic that you're not thinking about how to breathe through a certain transition or a certain movement. For example, from the floor and in your rice, yeah, so it's in it. It will be natural for you to inhale. So when you're twisting, for example, yeah, so as, after lengthening the spine, yeah, twist is an exhalation. Yeah, theoretically, that's the pattern of the twist. But when you are organic into your breath, this happens involuntarily. You don't have to think about doing the breath already. And, and when that happens, yeah, it's a good indication that the brain yeah, and your organs inside, especially the respiratory and your motor skills, are coordinated. And then you will utilize yeah, that newfound awareness in the way you, what? Hold the poses longer. So holding the poses longer is the second stage of your practice. Right, so for today, let me share with you a simple sequence of doing that. Holding the poses longer yeah, and then moving the spine in various directions. And what are these? elements. Flexion, where we fold our body over our hips, you know, forward bends, where we close the spine. Side bending, where we stretch the side trunk. And I'm, I am talking about this in order. Right? So this is how you need to sequence your asana. Flexion would have to come first because we're inherent folding forward. Side bending comes next to prepare for twisting asana, you know, where we spiral our spine towards the vertical. Then after twisting, yeah, back bending, where we open our bodies. Yeah, and then finally, neutral position, such as when we relax in a uh, shavasana or when we are sitting nice and tall during meditation or pranayama. All right, mobility, flowing, holding the poses longer to go deep into your energetic anatomy and awaken more subtle entities there, including the chakras, flowing the breath, and then irrigating the chakras using your yeah, coordination, using your skill of flowing the breath you've developed in the first stage. Then stillness while doing your energetic practices, pranayama and shavasana or complete silence and stillness. So that's the concept yeah, of a holistic practice. Right. But for today, we will be tackling the second stage, holding the poses longer and then moving our spine in those stated various positions. So I would normally start in the downward facing dog. Right? Downward facing dog is, I'd say, it's theoretically a flexion uh, since our hips are closed, but not too close. It's an inversion because the head is lower than the heart. It's a side stretch since we stretch the side trunk. Yeah. And it's also a hip opener. Yeah. We stretch the backs of our hips. So when you work the spine, yeah, so you will be accomplishing or tackling other elements 
uh, surrounding your body, which includes hip openness, strength, and I say stability or balance, right? And staying. So how long is the ideal yeah, I'm holding up the position? I'd say between a minute and a minute and a half. And depending on the length of your breath, this around 10 breathing, mindful breathing. And then from there, you might count the breath. Each time you exhale, that's one count. Exhaling. It doesn't mean that you are steady all throughout. If you feel the need to release position just a bit, but keeping the basic shape of the pose, that's what I mean about stillness. It's not totally still, yeah, literally still. Exhale. All right. And when you hold the poses longer, then just breathe through the nostrils. Yeah, keeping your lips closed. Staying in <laughs> the humid weather. Yeah, if you are <laughs> sweaty hands, my hands are. Um, if you feel like you need to uh, release them lightly, do that. How about three more? Yeah. If you want, you might lift the hips slightly up each time you inhale. And as you exhale, slide them back. Adjust if you need. One more, breathing in. Breathing out. Beautiful. All right, from there, yeah. Kneel, and then come down to a low kneel position. All right. And just recover. Yeah, maybe 10 mindful breathing here. And it's a good sitting position. This one we call the Virasana, or the kneeling pose. Your big toes might cross behind you. Yeah. If you need to modify, if the hamstrings are tight, you may place something behind and you're sitting over that cushion. All right, in here, if you analyze the spine is what? Upright, neutral position. Yeah, like you're being yeah, pulled up to the vertical axis. Yeah. The chest is neutrally open. The belly is hugging, but don't squeeze. And there's a light folding of the chin close to the sternum. And the skull is looping lightly forward. You may place and cup your hands. Or you may place them on your thighs. And then just breathe. You may do some visualization there. Like you're breathing from the tail to the brain. And the muscle suspension at the top. And exhale. And soften. Let's do another one. Breathing in. Breathing out. Good. From there, you have shift forward. If you feel tight spots, yeah, you might move the knees. So this is like breaking the cycle. And maybe side to side them. Gently pull back and forward. Good. And then just crossing the ankles and then sitting on the floor and extending your legs away from you. We're going to do flexion. So this is technically the start of the body of the practice, right? Yeah. Exhale first, inhale, lengthen the hands over the head, exhaling, as you inhale, shift forward, feel free to adjust the thigh back, and the exhalation, just fold over your legs. And there are many variations of afflection. So this is one of the most common but very powerful traditional Hatha Yoga technique we call the Pashimottanasana. Yeah? Or symmetrical forward bend. Oh. And here, just feel the breath once more. Every time you exhale, yeah, like the outer sides of the body, like the walls of the body, 
hug the spine inside like the organic bra brace but don't squeeze right? allow the exhalation to give you that support and you feel light and open through the outer body you may lift lightly up through time each time you inhale if you need and exhale go deeper and feel free to change the angles of your ankles you might flex them and then spend a couple of breaths here yeah feel free to release the halves and after that you might point your toes you might massage them yeah. if you need to place something under your knees if you're still building your flexibility do that and then you may combine you know pointing your ankles but yeah drawing or curling the tops of your feet yeah forward and then there you just settle yeah. and just breathe If the readiness is there, you can fully surrender over the thighs. But don't force it. Make sure your breath flows fluidly. And then forward bends. Yeah. We stimulate the adrenal system. So this is good to manage our emotional health and our mental stress level too. How about one more? I'm breathing in, breathing out, and right, to release. Breathing in, draw lightly forward, and just lift. All right, rest the hands behind you, and then lightly limp the legs. And then you might do this yeah, to break the cycle. Yeah, always. Yeah, ideal to break the cycle. So, for example, in the flow, you flow the vinyasa. Yeah, but when you're holding it longer, release the joints. Yeah, and wiggle. You might yeah, bend and stretch the legs. Yeah, and then side to side. Yeah, you might bend the knee and rub the buttocks. Yeah, like the Mahavedra Mudra. <laughs> right, beautiful. All right. So after the flexion side stretching i will just be teaching you simple one doable for everyone yeah, it's a combination of side stretching and hip stretch as well so we're going to lie down on our bellies and this position is so familiar if you're doing my classes yeah. matsya kridasana yeah the flipping fish all right so just bending one knee to the side closer to the ribs and extend the other side long all right and here we stretch and that long side feel free to adjust you may circle the knee first like this and to prepare the joints slide back a bit and then when ready you may fold the elbows or keep the arm long and then just rest the head over your bent side and then here settle and with the blanket supporting your body yeah it's lighter for the joints stay this position in any position where we are you are lying on the posterior and the, the body, the front of the body. You know what it does? Um, it strengthens the cardiorespiratory organs. So this is good for your lungs. Yeah? That's one. Yeah. Number two, especially this position, Master Kridasana, it opens and relaxes the sacrolumbar region. And also... It sends the energy easily to the core region, 
And in that part of our energetic anatomy, we hold three important clusters of nerves that we call chakras. First, down the pelvic cavity, yeah, the pelvic floor, the muladhara chakra, and that's the seat of foundation. Yeah, it's the solid state yeah, connected to the earth. And then go higher up around the sacrum. Yeah, and that's where our creative energies begin. Yeah, that's the element of water, our fluidity, yeah, our flow and our movement, both physical and energetic. Our creativity is there too. And then when these two elements combine, water and earth, you know, water being slightly cooler. And then the earth is swarm, they produce the Agni. This gentle Agni is so abundantly flowing you know, down the bottom part of our spine. However, the Agni doesn't just rise you know, because of the blockages we hold down the core region around the navel. Yeah, it gets obstructed. Yeah, so by doing this, we free stagnation there. So the energy, you know, the Agni, rises up inside the core region where we have the Manipura Chakra. It's the seed of what? You know, assimilation, becoming one with the rest. You know, physically, you know, digestion, elimination of toxin, Absorption of nutrients and energy, yes. So it looks simple, this one, yeah, but try it. Give this one a try and then practice this regularly. It will do wonders to your health, yeah, especially if you do it in the morning. And there are many ways you might fold the knee if you feel like tight there, and you can hold this longer than my required duration. It's also good for relaxing the brain, so if you find yourself... Um, difficult to sleep at night, try. And then, for example, if you fall asleep doing this, just be beautiful. All right, and from there, away, just press, and then just roll on your back, and then do a mild side to side. And what is this? Yeah active type of twist yeah but we will be doing the twist next yeah gather the legs extending yeah that first leg forward and cross the other on top all right let me change <laughs> yeah. and open away yeah. Yeah, twisting yeah so while you're holding this breathe yeah, feel free to turn the head around. All right. Similar as the platform fish and mostly hip openers and forward bends, they target you know, the three lower regions of our astral anatomy. Hips, sacrum, and the core. And there are many ways of doing twists. You may do it sitting. There are many, yeah, if, if not hundreds, yeah, thousands of asana. You can make up your own too. But I'm teaching you general ways where most people can practice without too much instruction. And it's uh, doable. They're relaxing too. Beautiful. All right, gather the knee. Yeah, hugging them. Yeah, if you feel like stagnation, yeah, you might do a mild side to side and circle around. You might cross the ankles and rise up and down. All right. So normally after this, yeah, I will lie down in a moment of shavasana, but not technically shavasana, just to drain the energy out and then breathe through it. You may do this, and generally, for most people, Shavasana is enough. 
if you are an advanced practitioner, you may do an inversion. And one inversion which I yeah, I'll recommend is the Viparita Karani. So Viparita Karani is where we lift our hips up to the vertical axis, but not too straight. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is like doable too with the prop under such as this and lift the legs up. So this could work as your alternative. Or you can just lie down just about Shavasana and then hold this for the same length of time. Yeah, 10 breaths. Uh, if you are advanced and you're able, but don't force it. Yeah, if you're practicing this with me, keep looking up. We're catching the hips, all right, and then move them up. And then yeah, lifting your feet up. Yeah, and then just align your toes towards the forehead region. Right. And here the spine, if you notice, the spine is not fully straight. It's angled towards the 45 degree flexion. Right. So there's actually a flexion of the cervical spine, the neck. Yeah, so the throat is stuck in closer to the upper chest. You may do a mudra there. You may roll your eyes between the eyebrows or close them. Yeah, drying your mouth in the process. You may visualize the breath starting from the hips down, entering the backs of the throat, all the way up to the brain inside. It's doable. You're yeah, doing 10 breaths with the prop or this. All right, to release. Reach those legs over. All right, and then slowly down. You may lift your head. As you roll your spine back down, such as this. Good. You can keep your legs straight. Yeah, awareness to the core. All the way down to the earth. Good. And rest for a moment. Good. And from there, reach one arm over. Rolling. And then find your way down to kneeling. Yeah, I would normally do a downward dog just to break the cycle and pedal the legs. Then I pull back and stretch. Yeah, turn the belly around. Beautiful. All right, come back to floor. And we do the side bend on the other side. Yeah, so bending the other knee. Yeah. Reaching long with that open side, and then rest the head sideways. And breathe. And if you need to prepare the knee more, you, know, you may move forward the side rock and around the knee joints. And release and hold it still. All right, just stay. Make sure you're breathing. And at this stage of your practice, where your energetic anatomy is quite open and aware, it's easy to direct the breath and the sensation. When I say the breath, it's more than the gaseous air. It's the sensation. It's the ability to channelize your breath through those yeah, really deep spaces inside your body yeah. where flow is never enough. To accomplish and by holding the pose as long as that's where you channelize yeah, the sensation, utilizing your awareness. So bandhas is like a new way of breathing through your body, as opposed to an autonomic uh, breath. You know, we, we just breathe you know, without noticing it. When you work on the bandhas, like you're breathing beyond your mechanical process. Right? So that's a progression, really. Yeah. The body is the temple. Open it. Strengthen it. Cleanse it. Yeah. In preparation for yeah, the flow of the energy 
of God. Yeah. And it's given to us when we're able to coordinate the breath and the minds and the bodies and the movement and going deeply into those commonly dormant channels. Right. Three more. Beautiful. All right, untangle. I'm just flipping over. Well, you may move the mouth side to side. Yeah, let's circle them around. And twist. Yeah, it's the other leg crossing. Beautiful. All right. Reclining twist. So when you know the concept of your practice, the asanas you do is limitless, depending on your level, depending on your goals for that particular practice, and depending on, you know, sometimes and depending on our situation, sometimes you have injuries. I have not stopped my practice if I hurt myself superficially, for example. Yeah, I burn my knees. You know, I, I accidentally trip. No, I don't stop. So I make sure that I keep the practice going by adapting and then knowing the structure, the concept. It's limitless. Yeah. Again, start with awareness and a neutral position of the spine. You may do the chanting, the Om, flexion. After flexion, what? Yeah. Side stretching. After side stretching, twisting. Yeah. Good. And then from there, yeah, lift away. Yeah. You may snake the spine. Right. Kneeling. Right. You may place your knees on that cushion to support you, mm. sit back. So you might do the flexion actually, this one, you have to restore. Good. And you might do this too, yeah. and roll the shoulders around. Good. And the last is extension, where we open the spine. And so uh, let me teach you yeah, a basic extension. All right. So from that position, this one, yeah, from the downward dog or kneeling, you might do this. And then just place your forearms in front. And you may turn the head to the side or place your forehead down the floor. Yeah. And from there, fold both knees and you circle them round. Easy first. Yeah. Just allow the joints to adapt. Yeah. And then from there, lift. And hang down, left, and hang and down, sliding back. Right. So back bends are the most challenging of all spinal movements because we're not inherent, we're not too efficient curling backwards. What the, anything behind our backs scary, right? No, but we need to do that, yeah, not just physically, mentally, explore, calculate the risk. All right, All right. now once the hips are open, yeah. slide forward, yeah, you might you know, set the side of the prop, All right. pressing yeah, the pubic bone down, your creative energy is there. And then use the palms to lightly move the spine away from your hips. A maltraction, you may lift the hips. Yeah, free your shoulders. Good. This is doable. Everyone can do this, right? 
And then staying 10 mindful breathing. So every time you inhale, lightly press and open. One side may be feeling shorter, wiggle a bit. Each time you exhale, you may lightly soften. And then open again. Let's have three more. Feel that? As you press down for your physical body, the haps, and you draw the breath high. <laughs> like there's something creeping up. That's one of the physical manifestations of the energy. You don't have to be perfectly square. Our bodies are not. And then settle. All right. And then do again the restoration. Circle around. Mm -hmm. Swimming the legs. Let them fall side to side. Beautiful. All right, extending. Yep. And finish in downward dog. So downward dog is like channeling the energy from the hips to the brain. This is also an inversion. So you may do another round of the legs up to the air, the vertical extension, or you can just do this. Good. And then sometimes, yeah, I would do another back bend before I lie down to stillness. Yeah, but this is like yeah, just an option. Yeah, you choose. Oops, so light. <laughs> yeah, when the body is so open, yeah, the body goes so light. It's the Ustrasana, or the Camel Pose. As you inhale, lightly press down and open. And lifting the heart. Yeah. And just stay as long as you can breathe comfortably, mindfully, and flowingly. Good. So structure structurally. Yeah, I encourage you to always end your practice with opening the spine. All right, good to come up. <laughs> Breathing in. This, and I release the shoulders. And finally, yeah. flat, neutral. And there's no other asana which serves that purpose than the shavasana mm, just keep the head supported so there's this healthy gap between your shoulders and your neck the neck and the floor and your spine can just relax flat on the ground and you rest And Shavasana can be held for many minutes. And I really encourage you to do so. Make your Shavasana special every time you practice. This is where your brain nourishes the rest of your body. And you're nourishing the brain with the energy you just harnessed from the practice.
And I leave you for now. Enjoy the rest of your meditation. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you always. Namaste. Bye.